everyone. Thanks for uh, showing up to our virtual uh, talk here. And um, I'm Joe Barbieri from the New City Library. And of course, today we have with us uh, Donna Tim and Bill Batson from the Nyack Mask Makers. Um, so we're going to do our housekeeping before we get started in earnest. Um, so uh, we have a couple ways uh, for us to, uh, to get a hold of each other and interact. Um, we can, you can use the chat option and type up a question. And we also have a Q&A button. Um, they're more or less going to be doing the same, same things. Um, I'm going to be referee, as Bill said, and I will be watching and keeping an eye on those. And um, when I can, I think I'll be trying to slide in our questions from, uh, from, our, uh, from everyone here. Um, and we'll see uh, if I can make them flow nice and evenly and segue in. Um, so a couple different ways there for you to type in and then, um, you know, at the end, if we, if there's anything we didn't have time to get to, or we need to backtrack, I think we can, uh, we can do it then. Um, so it looks like we're, uh, we're filling up here. So, um, I think we'll get started in earnest now. Um, so, um, Donna and Bill, uh, so, you know, I, I think a, a bunch of us know you already from, from various other you know, community project that you've been in, uh, in Nyack and in the county. Um, but would you, you know, for those of us who are just meeting you for the first time through Nyack Mask Makers, uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourselves and um, what you do? And um, I think right after that, just we'll roll right in. How did the Nyack Mask Makers get off the ground? So um, I'll, I'll uh, go for it. Donna? Thank you, Bill. Hi everybody and thank you so much for coming this evening. It's beautiful out now, so I really understand that you're not out there weeding, but you're watching us, so it means a lot. Um, I moved to Rockland with my family in uh, 2012, and um, very quickly after that, I met Bill Batson at a uh, Nyaka sketch flash mob. That was our first introduction to this fantastic, creative, wonderful community that we have here. And it was, you know, we just hit it off and it's been a pretty solid friendship ever since. Um, I also uh, head up the Nyack Art Collective and um, First Fridays, which has been going also since December of 2012. So everything happened that year. That was my whole destiny for my life here, which is fantastic. And um, so we, you know, uh, we do First Fridays and we meet and greet lots and lots of people. We have lots of followers and... We have about 50 artists, and um, some of the mask makers are part of the, also the Nyack Art Collective. Um, I'm also involved on the VP of the John Greenhouse, uh, where I met Joe, and um, that's been wonderful, and we're hoping one of these days that um, the John Greenhouse will be an arts and community center here in Nyack also. Um, as regards to how the Nyack mask makers got started, um, on March 19th, I couldn't sleep. I was up very late. I was on my iPad and started reading all these horrible articles about where things were going to go with COVID and the situation we were going to be in here in America with the lack of, of masks. And um, started researching all these different patterns and really sort of thinking, I'm going to do something about this. And by strange serendipity, Bill Batson called me in the morning at eight o'clock and said, hey, Donna, I think we need to do something. There's <laughs> going to be this huge surge and we're going to need masks. It's like, that is so weird. I was just up reading. It was a very, like one of those really uh, odd, um, you know, something bigger than us is out there situations. And so we instantly went on Facebook and uh, I wrote on my Facebook, hey, Naya community of sewers. Uh, who would be interested in making masks for the first responders and Nyack Hospital. And it was honestly, within a couple of hours, I had 90 odd people who were my friends saying, yeah, I'm in, let me, you know, tell me what I need to do. And uh, my husband who's very techy, said, no, we need to do this properly. We have to set a website and get people to register and do this right way around. So he did that and um, everything just really started happening very fast. But it wouldn't have happened quite so well if it hadn't been for Bill Batson having a wonderful connection with Dr. Geller, who is the director of Nyack Hospital. And um, Bill, would you like to um, talk sure. about that? Sure. I'm going to bookend, so I'll 
talk about, I'll pick up where, where Donna left off and I'll just say just a tiny, a little bit about myself. So, um, I have, um, I have a, a, a I work with the Nyack Chamber of Commerce. I've been the artist in residence at the farmer's market for many years. And uh, I came to know Dr. Geller. The hospital for the last few years had done this incredible event, this um, breast health awareness fashion show on Main Street. Um, so we, I got to work with him pretty closely. So I had his cell phone number. And um, this is in the middle of a pandemic and I've never spoken to him casually. And we're talking Saturday morning. And I texted him, I didn't call him, and I said, I'm going to measure how urgent this matter is by how long it takes for him to get back to me. And I think he called me within three minutes of the text. So I said, this is really serious. Um, and he took us seriously, which made me a little scared, because normally presidents of hospitals aren't provisioning from neighborhood sewing groups that, that aren't even formed yet. So we worked together from the beginning to make sure we could rise to the standard that they required. They gave us a template. They, they had us talk to their infection preventionist. They, they, they reviewed our template. And then we came up with some hard numbers. And I think we held our breath. Donna had gotten a list of uh, almost 100 people pretty quickly who would, was willing to do it. We suddenly had some real trouble provisioning like the rest of the world. We couldn't find elastic. Um, the village of Nyack stepped in and helped us with, I think, the first uh, um, shipment. Um, we got the materials out, and then there was this very scary silence. Um, and, uh, you know, we thought we would have, we didn't know what we'd have. And the first day, we had 40, 40 masks. And we knew we wanted to get to 2,000. So you do the math. It would take a long 40 masks a day. It would take a while to get to 2,000. By the end of the first week, we had 1,000. And I think by the end of the second week or into the third, in between you know, two and a half weeks, we came up with 2,000 masks. So eventually throughout the course, I think we averaged out about 1,000 per week and incredible that volunteers grew to 400. And we'll, we'll talk about how, how that worked um, and, and, and other things. I know there's some questions, but um, I um, have uh, had a column in, in the village and, and gotten to know that Nyack is a place that does respond to things collectively. Um, and that there is a great interest in, in each other's lives. And I've been able to tap into that through my column, The Nike Sketch Log. Every week for nine years, I've posted a, a sketch and a short essay about a person or place of interest. Um, I've also actually profiled a lot of artists and I profiled Donna and a lot of the members of the Mask Makers and a lot of the members of the Nike Art Collective. Um, out of my, so I've done it for nine years. Next year will be my 10th year um, and my 500th column is coming up. Um, so, uh, and, and I kind of thought that I would run out of steam. Well, I'll probably run out of steam before I run out of subject matter. <laughs> so I haven't even scratched the surface. Out of the column, um, the Bench by the Road project emerged. I wrote about the Underground Railroad and we discovered that Tony Morrison had a project to put benches in towns to commemorate the African diaspora, a very relevant uh, matter nowadays because we were honoring at that point the 400 years of oppression and we didn't know what would happen in the 401st first year, which is what we're learning today in the streets of our country. Um, I also uh, worked uh, with the, the Hopper House on the Nyack Record Shop Project, where we collect oral histories, and uh, Brian Jennings, who is um, the, the uh, uh, librarian, uh, adult reference librarian, I believe, at, um, yep. at, at, at New City, was instrumental in training people, and we gathered um, over 40 oral histories that are now part of the collection of the Nyack Library. And the last thing is um, what, what Donna mentioned, um, the flash sketch mob came out of this. Um, at one point, I had, was hu I had the hubris to think I could single-handedly, you know, draw every square inch of a one-mile, you know, uh, square one-square-mile village, and I realized how uh, foolish that was. That, you know, even John Henry couldn't do it. But then I said, what if we had a hundred John Henrys? So the flash sketch mob was born. We're going to do one, I think, further north in a village up upstate. I'm working on with right now, and I met. Um, uh, uh, Donna at a flash sketch mob and one of my favorite flash flash mobs ever was one we threw for her daughter um, at the Nyack Center um, but now I'm full circle I'm the artist in residence at the farmer's market and um, every other artist are, are involved in this project I'm going to show you a piece by Peter Cheney and I sit there every uh, Thursday with my sign and I hand out free masks because you can't shop at the Nyack farmer's market without a mask and I believe that masks are like air. 
You know, you need air to breathe, so it shouldn't be for sale. Everyone should have it. You need a mask to breathe safely in this world we're in right now. So until it changes, we're going to keep making masks. Right, Donna? That's right. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, I think you had mentioned that um, working with the hospital, you were, you were working with them to make sure that the masks were up to snuff. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? And then are you making other ones for just, you know, everyday folks like me, if I just need one to, you know, run downtown real quick, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing uh, surgery or any kind of important work like that? Okay. Sure, I can answer this question. Um, so currently we make two kinds of masks. Uh, originally, we just had to make something that was as close to an N95 as a fabric mask could be. And, you know, once you start researching, you just open up piles and piles of information. And from what I could find out, the best type of fabric to use was a very closely woven fabric, cotton, that was like sort of fabric quilters would use. I was like, oh, quilting, aha, uh -huh, we've got that. And then the next thing we needed was flannel. We live in Rockland, everybody has flannel. It's like flannel sheets, we just have it. So I was like, all right, we have what we need. So I um, sort of put together a design using uh, one layer of the cotton quilting fabric and another layer of flannel and another layer of cotton quilting fabric and elastic and came up with a design which is just like this one. Oh. Okay. It has two end caps as we've called them, which kind of cover up all the stitching, make it nice and neat. And you put it on and it unfolds, you know, so this is very, close to, you know, sort of a surgical type mask. And this is, um, we presented the hospital with two kinds of masks like this. And this was the one that they liked the best. Um, and I drew up um, the pattern and, you know, took photographs of step by step. And that's what we sent out to the, um, to the makers. Um, but in between time, I figured that one of the other issues that we're going to have is getting materials consistently, as in the quilting cotton. And, um, you know, messaged Lisa at the quilt tree in Nyack and said, we really need your store to be open. This is really important right now. And she was like, oh, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of rules and regulations about opening stores. And it was at the same time that they released a list of vital, you know, what stores wouldn't be vital for us and what wasn't. And, you know, the quilt tree was vital for us and she was able to open. So she opened her store for five days a week from 11 till 3 and at first it was pretty quiet and then it became you know everybody was calling and and she was constantly just supplying people with with fabric and then you know of course one of the other issues we have is how we we're going to purchase this fabric um bill batson is brilliant of course at working these things out and set up a gofundme and um that was the, like a total lifesaver because people you know would just donate i mean just donate fifty dollars ten dollars a hundred dollars money's just started pouring in um over fourteen thousand dollars actually in so far that we brought in i think uh, i don't know exactly. 200 don from, from 200 donors yeah wow. people were just amazing and and now um so this was the first one that we made and then we we said okay so now it's really important that we make something that everybody can wear not you know also we had the problem with finding elastic but a design that everybody could wear that we wouldn't have to worry about elastic and so that's when we came up with this next design which you see around and this is the masks for all design <clears throat> and this also is made up of the same three layers of fabric and this one loops around the back of your head i'll, I'll just demonstrate <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> loops down and you scrunch it up and then you tie it behind your head. I'll do an analog screen share. <laughs> exactly. Oh, there we go. All right. So this is the type. Yes. This is the type that Bill has mostly at his at the farmers market. Some people, of course, um, want the the ones with the elastic, you know, and and so we try and um, you know provide for that. Um, we also have been, um, you know, sending out. Um, notices to people who live in the Nyack area that if they want to, to receive one of these masks, they can go onto our website and register and, um, 
you know, can, can have one delivered or pop along to the market and pick one up from Bill, which has been fantastic to have that location. Yeah, we've given out about a thousand. We did, so after the hospital and some other frontline institutions were serviced, we um, realized that the governor was about to require masks in, in public and for folks wanting to go into stores. So we created this mask for all campaign with the village of Nyack. We partnered with Mario, the magician, the maker magician to create um, some uh, promotional material and instructional material. And uh, we've given out about a thousand masks through that pro process, maybe a few more, but those are, are, are hand delivered. People call up and leave an address and the number of masks they need and with support from the village and the Department of Public Works, where the masks are sorted, put in a paper bag, which is uh, safer in terms of, uh, you know, uh, preventing transmission. And, um, and we go to your door and drop them off. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So all in all, with, um, you know, folks doing logistical things like being mask runners and mask makers, um, how, how many, give or take, because I know, I know you're, you're working with lots of organizations and people and, and you know, volunteers, how many all, all together, would you say? I think this is, we're about 400 strong wow. between the, the makers and the, the people who are the runners and, uh, you know, delivery people and it's, you know, the town people, just, it's been amazing. I and mean, then if you add the 200 donors, it's a, a body of 600. So if we were marching in a parade, we would be a, if they had parades, yeah. we, would <laughs> yeah. be a, we would be a pretty big, uh, you know, delegation. Of mask wearers and makers. Yeah, and we'd all be and we'd all be wearing masks. That would distinguish us. <laughs> yep. Some of the other. Um, so my next question is to kind of follow up on that one. What other organizations are you working with? Because there's lots of uh, individuals involved, but it also sounds like you guys have been working with lots of uh, uh, bigger organizations on the whole. And so I'll answer that one, Donna. So at, at first we had um, one client. And that was a very important client because it serves a big portion of the county, and that's Montefiore Nyack. So we wanted to make sure that they were covered first. So we got to around 2,100 masks for them, which covered all of their employees. And um, yeah, as, as Donna said, these are not surgical masks. So there's no, no surgeons are using them in, in the sur surgical theater. But in order to take pressure off the masks that they need for those occasions, which are the, uh, the uh, N95 masks, our masks are used in the hallways and they're handed out like PPE. So, um, you know, you, um, anytime you're in the hospital now, you need to be wearing a mask, which is not the way it normally is. So if, if everyone was pulling from the N95s, that they would deplete their support. So everyone was given, I think one or two. Um, but once we got through Montefiore Nyack, what we understood is that, um, so we, um, got a list of all the nursing homes, and we actually coordinated some with another group that around, started around this time, the uh, the Ma Mask Warriors. Warriors, yes. The Mask Warriors. And um, we sound like a, se the two of us were like a 70s movie. And um, the Mask Makers and the Mask Warriors. And we, um, we, uh, we, we divided it up, and we basically took care of, I think, 36 nursing homes in the county. Each of them got around 50 to 100. And then we... Um, uh, we realized that Rockland Psych has this gigantic campus and we were worried that they were somewhat isolated. And what we discovered is that they were absolutely incredibly isolated. The first time I went there, none of the patients were wearing masks. And when the people came out of the building, they were, they did not ask who we were or why we came. They said, please help give us more, give us more. So eventually we gave them around 1100. Um, and the third largest recipient of masks who also came to us, was the Center for Safety and Change. And, and um, right beyond, behind what I say, the earthquake of the epidemic of COVID-19 was a tsunami of domestic violence. Um, at the same time that their um, funding um, dropped because of the inability to raise money, all the fundraisers that they had got canceled, um, they had their greatest need ever. So they, they lost money exponentially, but their demand went up, I think 500% is one of the numbers I've heard. Um, so they got five, they asked for 500 and received 500 masks from us. Um, so uh, other places where there was an addiction center, um, Blaisdell Addiction Center got masks from us, Crystal Run Healthcare, um, 
hospitals around the region found out about us and reached out. So Flushing Hospital in Queens, Harlem Hospital, um, Grace's Kitchen, a lot of the food programs, um, Jackson Fire Engine, um, the multi-purpose center um, in Spring Valley, the Martin Luther King multi-purpose center got a, a couple hundred masks. Um, the C community ambulance corps. I mean, because every all the first responders, you know, were at harm's way while we were quarantined. They were out every day. Um, so as I said, Rockland uh, sheriffs, um, the Soup Angels, uh, the United Hospice of Rockland, the Upper Room House of Worship Food Bank in Spring Valley, and then finally businesses started to come to us. There's a check check cashing place out in Congress. And what happened? There was one point, Donna, I'm sure you remember this because it was so shocking. Um, the village of Nyack wanted to do a drive through distribution of masks. And at that point, I think we were giving masks, we were making a thousand a week, but when you do a drive through, you want to have three or 4,000 just in case three or 4,000 people come. You don't want to turn anybody away. So we had raised, as Donna said, around $15,000. So we offered to, 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 we offered to donate $2,000 towards buying masks. And we had some of the best, um, you know, uh, uh, procurement people in this county. We gave them the money. They couldn't find masks to buy. They could not find masks. They kept getting orders, and their orders were canceled. And what happened was there was this incredible competition. The federal government disappeared. Not only did they disappear, but when they reappeared, they encouraged states to compete against each other. And often the federal government was competing against states. States were competing against states. And then businesses started to jump in because they were reopening. So it was really just a perfect storm of, of poor planning. And, um, and, and, and we knew that businesses would need them. So, you know, when a business asked, we didn't say, write a check, buy your own, because we knew that they probably couldn't. Certainly some of the businesses donated, but we've never ever, and I think Donna, you could, you know, attest to this. We never made a quid pro quo. We never said to somebody, make a donation and then you'll get a mask. I mean, our, our view is mask for all. If you ask for a mask and we have a mask, we're going to give you a mask. Exactly. Thank you, Will. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good philosophy there. Um, so uh, I'd say right, right now, where where are the NIAC mask makers? Are there supplies that you need still? Are, um, is, are there ways people can donate or either time, energy, money, other resources? Well, we're, we're always open to having a new mask maker. <laughs> um, there's not going to be, I, I feel, I, I can't even imagine a time at this point where I would say, oh, no, we don't need anybody else because we're still, we're still in it. Um, and so we still have people who join every day actually to be a, a, a Nike mask maker, um, which is wonderful. Uh, we've been very fortunate with Elastic, um, very fortunate in the way that many of the, the mask makers have also been ordering Elastic at the time when there was no Elastic to be found and it was going to take two months to get here. That actually finally came through. And then they would drop it off for me. And it was wonderful because it was a whole army of people who were trying to find elastic. So right now I have like this little stockpile of elastic. And so if we need it, we're ready. Um, and, you know, we're still making the masks. But it's, it's not at the same, you know, quantity as we have been before, thank goodness. And, you know, the quilt tree is open. It has longer hours now. And so people are able to go there and get their fabrics. Um, so for cross, you know, fingers crossed and everything, for the time being, we're, we're sitting very well. Uh, we have the materials we need. We still have people signing up and we're still producing masks and we're still delivering masks. So it's everything is just clicking along, you know, in a really nice way now. There's not that panic that we used to have. You know, it just feels very comfortable and people are making masks when they can. And, you know, not feeling the pressure like, oh, my goodness, I took the day off and I really feel guilty about it. You know, people aren't feeling that way anymore. I hope. I hope. Write to me if you are. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, we got a question in the chat here from uh, from Diane, and she says, "What's next for us?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> <But I think laughs> so. well, let's see. Um, well, more masks. Uh, we're Perfect. still making our masks, medical masks, as we call them, and our masks for all masks. Um, I, I don't know what else is going to happen. I don't know. I hope it's good yeah. stuff, though. I hope it's a really fun thing. What would you want to tell the, um, just the, the general public, you know, me off the street, um, what, what would you want to tell me about the mask makers or 
um, you know, the advice just, I, I should still be wearing mine, right? If I, yeah, if I was talking to Joe Rockland, let's say you're yeah. Joe Rockland, <laughs> Joe Barbieri, um, I would uh, say, um, assume you have it. Assume that there, there are still cases. We, we're not, we're, there are no, we haven't gotten to zero in Rockland County, and there have been mass gatherings uh, as part of the social justice protests that have been going on, and there are people who are just disregarding flagrantly the need. So you'll go into places, there are reports every weekend of parks and supermarkets that are full of people not wearing masks. So I would assume that I have it so that I do not infect someone in my family who's got an underlying condition and could die from it, or, or, or an elder who could die from it. Um, and that even more importantly, we want to give our hospitals a break so they can go back to dealing with heart attacks and strokes and, and oncology and, and, and gerontology and pediatrics and those things that we need them to do because they were, they were pushed to the point of breaking. They were bent to the point of snapping in two and having to do, and we never really describe what that means. So maybe we should. If, if a hospital breaks, two patients will go into the front door and for no other reason than some arbitrary kind of triage judgment over age or family or some other perception, which you never want a healthcare worker to have to make, one person's going to get a ventilator and the other isn't. And the person who doesn't get one is going to die. And they may have survived if they had a ventilator. So you never want a hospital to get over capacity. And we came this close and we don't know what the fall is going to be like. And, I, you know, I would, there are countries that were allegedly overreacting and got hysterical about this. Well, they never really dealt with either 1,000 deaths or 10,000 deaths or 100,000 deaths. And now we're at 130,000 deaths and we're still going. And those folks in the other parts of the country, so right now the curve is going down in New York and New Jersey. Well, it's going up in Oklahoma. And I bet you people from Oklahoma fly and take buses. So I'd assume you have it. And I would um, wear a mask until the all clear sign is, is uh, sent. And nobody's sent an all clear sign. And here's the other thing. Don't look to the federal government for an all clear sign because uh, apparently they think it's over. And, and they're holding events and mass events and, you know, and, 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 and creating a circumstance where it could spread even further. So it's not even that they're not paying attention to it. They're increasing the likelihood of its continued, you know, spread. So as crazy as that is, we learned from this experience that we have to look after each other, that we don't need to wait for, you know, we can use our eyes, we can use the internet, we can use our, our judgment, we can use our skills as artists and makers. And, um, and, and, and that's what I say. I say, wear a mask until, you know, you, you have an intelligent reason not to wear a mask. And right now, I think, you know, common sense says wear a mask. Yeah, I think that's good advice. Um, we've got a question here uh, from, the, uh, from the audience. Uh, uh, which, uh, which, uh, what's, what's the greater need, uh, the medical, medical uh, professionals or just the community in general? And uh, she adds that she'll make masks for either. <laughs> I have this question every day from one of the makers. What should I be doing now? Should I be making the medical ones? Or, and I, um, I usually say that the need is great on both and that make whichever one that you feel more comfortable with. Um, the hospital um, pleated mask here is, is more complicated to, to make and takes longer. Um, but the need is great for both. And if you say to yourself, I'm going to make 10 masks, make five of each, and then we're covered. That's, you know, that's an easy way of out of there asking this question. So, uh, you, Joe, you were asked earlier what's coming next. There's some interesting ideas about what to do with masks or, or how, well, first of all, what to do after you're done with the mask. Um, uh, Keep Rock and Beautiful has informed us that the greatest pollutant that is, is um, they're confronting in, in, in the county are disposed, uh, poorly disposed of masks and gloves. People yeah, are just discarding them. And, and uh, they could possibly be contaminated. It's a kind of a biohazard material. 
So um, the mask makers are going to work with the NIAC uh, Art Collective to create a campaign to encourage people to properly dispose of their masks. And there's another organization that's talking about putting some kind of message on the mask. So it would be great if people had masks that say, I'm going to vote or I voted or, you know, it's the census, can be counted because it's a new area of eventually Madison Avenue is going to find this real estate. So, you know, we might as well yeah. be the first. <laughs> and then, as I promised my colleagues, there's some wonderful local artists who are uh, putting this as a canvas. Mm -hmm. This mask here. Oh! oh. <laughs> this is my Vinnie Rafa mask. <laughs> He's making masks. Here, here's Vinny Very on the ridiculous. side. Yes. Yep. There, yep. There's Vinny. And then this <laughs> one. This is my favorite mask. Donna made me this mask because I've got a big mouth and a big head and the other ones didn't work. So this one I've had for, for since the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah. retire it so I don't lose it because I lose everything. <laughs> and then I love my kind of like African themed mask. This is what I wear the most now. It's getting the most okay. use. But my favorite one is when we gave the mayor and Mark Geller, their 10,000th mask. Donna surprised me with this one. Which oh. has, you know, this, uh, it, it, it's got embroidered, got my name embroidered there. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently this is the same kind of raw silk that was used to create Princess Diana's wedding dress. Wow. That's right. Yes. Not, the, not the actual fabric in her dress. <laughs> just let me just say <laughs> But still, still pretty limited edition right there, I think. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's special. He's special. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. You resemble that remark. So um, I think we'll give folks uh, a few more minutes here to type up any other questions they have and either the Q&A section or just the chat in general. Um, but in the meantime, where can folks uh, get a hold of you if they want to get involved? What's the best way for them to, uh, to, to track you guys down and to... Uh, you know, jump in and, and join you guys. Okay, sure. So we have our website, which is the NiacMaskMakers.com. And on that, it's, very, it's a very straightforward website, basically one page. And um, on that page, you will find um, the pattern for the masks for all. So you can just jump ahead and make them. You don't have to be a mask maker. There's the pattern for everybody to use. You can register there to be a Niac mask maker. And then you get a little email from me with, details about where you can get your fabric, where you can get your machine fixed, all those little things. Uh, you can also register there to receive a mask. If you know somebody who's looking for a mask, you can pass that information along to them. Um, even if they're outside of the NIAC area, we'll try and figure out a way of getting a mask to them. Um, I'm trying to think what else is on that. Um, we have uh, links to uh, various um, other opportunities like this where we've had to, you know, been able to speak. And, uh, of course, Knife News and Views articles are up there and our account of how many masks that we've made. So it's, um, it's a great little go-to. And it's just one page. And it has a link, too, to the GoFundMe page, which is if you just go say GoFundMe, Nike Mask Makers. And we're trying to, as I said, stockpile masks, as we both said, and um, but also have a little bit of an emergency reserve. So, you know, um, at some point we might, you know, just ask for another round of, um, of, of, of donations. And we know that we're competing. I mean, one thing I'd like to mention is that while we were kind of clothing the frontline troops, there was this wonderful group called Nyack Nourishes that was feeding the frontline troops. And um, they provided, I mean, Dr. Geller has said that for the two thick months of this, there was no one at Nyack Hospital who paid for a meal. Wow. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner were covered by the community. So that, that's extraordinary. And, um, and uh, also there was a group called Make Some Noise, which provided music at every shift change. So we really did find that, you know, um, we didn't really need to wait for the cavalry because we, we were the cavalry. It's been amazing. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys. And we're getting some thank yous in our chat here too. Um, we just have... Uh, some folks mentioning, thank you for everything you're doing. And uh, we have uh, an, another uh, person writing in saying, I've been making masks for friends too. And I asked them to donate to the mask makers as payment. So mm -hmm. I think that really thank you. all those things encompass the, the spirit of what you guys are doing. And we've seen what you've been doing for NIAC super locally, but also just the county and then even, you know, beyond in general. So I think um, uh, 
I think that's that's great. And uh, we have another one coming in here from uh, from Carol. I feel honored to be part of the effort. Uh, yeah, we had a good number of mask makers on the call, so we really want to figure out a way to get everybody together. And you know, we're coming. We're talking to some artists to find a way to have a record where the names of and maybe a photo and you know a sentence or a thought from each of you would would be collected somewhere. So you know, we uh, we're mindful of that, and um, and that's an important part of this work because. Um, you know, it, it should be remembered that Nyack kind of responded to this um, as a village, and um, we want everyone to be remembered who played a role. Yeah, so uh, Donna, Bill, and everyone who's part of the Mask Makers, I thank you for taking the time out to talk with us today because I know the past couple of weeks have probably been beyond crazy for, uh, for, for you folks <laughs> there. So um, thank you, and... Um, thank you. Thanks for, for sharing all of this, and uh, I hope we can bring you some more folks and uh, get some more masks out there. Sure thing. Right. Well, thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thank right. you. Take care. Thank you for attending, everyone.